I appreciate the most about you is your gentleness and tenderness toward me. The fact that you're not afraid to say I love you. And my life has been impacted by several things that you embody. I would say first and foremost your love of country, your sense of duty, and your example and commitment to that which is morally good versus what is wrong or easier. Hey, what's up, Chris? It's Andrew, and I'm recording live from Chautauqua, New York. And today is August 16th, and as a tribute to what an awesome brother and guy you are, and now soon to be father, and husband, and son, and every other accolade you've, uh, you've admirably done. Um, I just wanted to say how much I care about you and how freaking glad I am that Iraqis are not trained to fire high-powered rifles. Um, because tomorrow's your live day and I love you and my life's been so much fuller you know, having you here in the past nine years. So I just wanted to tell you how much I fucking love you, man. And uh, really looking forward to uh, having you back on the East Coast. And uh, thank you. Go infantry. Good morning, Christopher. This is the ninth anniversary of the day you were wounded. No father is prouder of you for the man you are and the husband you've become and the father you're about to become. I just want to let you know how much I love you and how proud I am of who you are and the fine, outstanding leader you've become. Our country needs you. Go Army! Love you. Hi, Christopher. I wanted to say I'm glad you're around. Today is your, the ninth anniversary of your Alive Day. The anniversary of the day that you were injured over in Iraq. And I remember that morning that Daddy came up woke me up to tell me that you were injured, that you were shot. And the only thing I asked him was, is Christopher still alive? He said, yes. I said, okay, I'll be right down. And when Daddy left the room, I said a prayer and I thanked God for not taking my son from me today. You mean so much to me. I love you. I'm very proud of you. I'm looking forward to many, many years with you and your family. You have never disappointed me. And I'm very lucky to have you as my son. Love you, sweetheart. Hi, Christopher. Happy Alive Day. I remember that day very vividly. I just got home from singing in Chautauqua Motet Choir, and Grandma came out on the porch, and she was crying. And she said, Christopher has been shot and I fainted dead away. <laughs> I didn't want anything to happen to you. We're so glad you're alive. Happy Alive Day. Oh, I look at the green light? Yeah, and oh, I'm just okay. speaking to the green light. Okay. It's going. Hi, Chris. This is your grandmother. I get calling to wish you a happy Alive Day. It's August the 17th. You remember what happened? I'm sure you do. And I do too. I remember your mother called me and she said, Christopher's been shot. And I said, where, where? She didn't say, I know where you were, but where in your body were you shot? And so she told me in your hands. And I thought, well, thank God he's not dead, thank God. And so <clears throat> then I was worried, I was very worried. I, I was afraid you might lose your hands. And so we got the picture that Bob Tracy's friends sent 
and uh, there you were, grinning, and with your hands up, both your hands up, and you had a grin on your face, and I thought, oh, thank God, thank God he's all right. But I was still worried about your hands, and so our neighbor, Jim Cimento, who happens to be a orthopedic surgeon, looked at them, and he could tell, for some reason or other, he could tell that, no, they'd be all right. And so I don't know whether he really could or whether he just said that to make us feel better. But anyhow, I felt a lot better about it. And all I could think of was, thank you, God. He's alive. It was a very emotional day. I still feel emotional when I think about it. But anyhow, <clears throat> I'm in Chautauqua. I'm sitting on my porch. I comb my hair and put some makeup on so I wouldn't look as old as I am. And I was uh, just thinking about you this afternoon, wondering how you're doing with your studies and so on. And... Uh, what's going on with that and when you're going to move and everything. I know it's a lot of things going on. It can be very stressful. Moving is one of the most stressful things that can ever happen in a person's life. And I remember the last time I moved, I thought I'll never move again. But anyhow, we're having a pretty good time. This week is the week on war and war warriors. And David Petraeus is coming on Thursday morning. And so uh, that should be interesting to hear what he has to say. We had a woman veteran today who is taking over an administrative post in the Veterans Hospital, and hopefully she'll uh, make the services better for the veterans. And um, Andrew's sitting here on the porch with me. We've had some time together. Not enough time, because he's very busy and he's been getting over a cold, but a little time. Anyhow, Andrew, did you want to ask me a question or anything? No, it sounds uh, great. Girl. No, it sounds all right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you take care of yourself, sweetheart. <laughs> and Jess and the baby. And I'm going to call Jess because there's something I want to buy for you, and she can pick it out, but I'll talk to Jess about that. Take care, sweetie. Mm.